but I think I've got a, I think I've got a quorum now. So. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a few minutes after five. I'm advised uh, uh, by Rachel Gamble that we are streaming live on uh, our web page as well as streaming uh, live on uh, uh, Facebook. So let me get started with this pre-commission meeting and read the uh, required uh, disclaimer. Out of an abundance of caution, uh, making bib commission meeting scheduled for Tuesday afternoon, December the 1st at five o'clock pre-commission and six o'clock commission will be available to the Macon Bibb County Commissioners by video conference only. The commission chambers will be closed to the public and press in order to slow the spread of COVID-19. Therefore, the public and press may only access the meeting simultaneously online at www.makonbib.us or www.facebook.com forward slash Macon Bibb County. Uh, with that having been said, uh, I appreciate everybody's being here for this pre-commission meeting. I do need to add an executive session uh, to our agenda for the pre-commission meeting for consultation with the county attorney or other legal counsel to discuss pending or potential litigation, settlement claims, administrative proceedings, or other judicial actions brought or to be brought by or against Macon Bibb County or any officer employees or in which the county or any also employee may be directly involved as provided in OCGA 50-14-2, parenthesis uh, one, close parenthesis. Can I get a motion to add an executive session to this agenda this afternoon? So moved. Got a uh, motion mo motion by Schlesinger and Allen. Further conversation, Commissioner Lucas? Uh, yeah, uh, will there be any department heads or any other kind of uh, any individuals like we had a day when um, Chief no, ma'am, uh, I think no, no, ma'am, I, 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 no, ma I think this is just going to be conversation by the county attorney about lit threatened litigation. Okay, because I would not wish to participate in another one uh, yeah. like that where there are people who who really should not be in on sessions Understand. like that. Understand okay, your position. Thank further, you. right? Further, further conversation. If not, all in favor of adding the executive session for the stated purpose, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say no. The ayes have it, so we'll add the executive session. Um, uh, the announcements that we wanted to start off with uh, uh, include, of course, the update on the governor's executive order. I understand that the governor may have issued another executive order. So let me call on Michael McNeil uh, to see what he did and kind of where we are with the state of emergency. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So uh, Governor Kemp is, has issued three new executive orders, um, one related to uh, the distribution of, of information as it uh, concerns COVID vaccines um, to help uh, manage the, the distribution of vaccines. He issued another order extending the state of emergency um, for Georgia through January 8th of 2021. And um, he issued a, a new order for the next, I believe the next two weeks uh, into uh, December. And so uh, those came out right at the end of the day yesterday. I haven't had a, a full chance to um, analyze them all, but um, that's, that's the gist of it is there, there is new executive orders. The state of emergency is continuing and I'll send out an email with a full report, uh, I believe tomorrow. That'll be great, Michael. Thank you very much. Questions uh, from many members of the commission, either of our commissioners elect or mayor elect of, of Michael about the executive orders. And with this, with this extension of the state of emergency through January the 8th, that gives us the op option of continuing our Zoom meetings through that day. Uh, and and Correct. I'll just say it would be my inclination at this point to, to do that with the exception of the inauguration uh, meeting, which is going to be on December the 30th. So the rest of them will be by Zoom and we'll social distance and, and mask up uh, for the inauguration on December the 30th at 11 o'clock in the morning at the city auditorium. Uh, other than that, we'll proceed with Zoom meetings until then, um, much to my chagrin, but hey, better to be safe than sorry. Uh, speaking of being so better safe than sorry, Spencer, are you on here to give us the latest information on our numbers? Yes, sir, I am. 
Excellent. Uh, let me call on you at this point, please, sir, to tell us where we are with our COVID numbers. Well, sir, I'm going to echo your comments and say it is absolutely better to be safe than sorry, um, especially with where our numbers are, not just within Macon Bibb County, but within the entire central Georgia region and the north central health district. Uh, currently, we're at uh, 24 cases on the seven day moving average, which means on, a, on average, every day, we're adding 24 new cases of COVID-19. Um, our deaths are still between uh, 0.6 and 0.4. So think about three, two to three people a week are dying of COVID-19. Um, at this point, I know we are talking a lot about vaccines and the vaccine implementation, but unless you are a healthcare worker, unless you are a frontline public safety person, you can expect to get your vaccine. At, this is the latest information that we're getting sometime around late spring, early summer of 2021. And so we're looking at least another six months of dealing with COVID-19. And like I said, this is not just making Bibb County. On a whole, all of the counties around us are seeing increases in numbers. We're lucky, we've only seen over the last week about a 9% increase in cases overall. There are some of our surrounding uh, contiguous counties here in the Central District that are seeing 200 and 300% increases in their cases. And so now it is more important than wow. ever that we talk about wearing a mask at all times, socially distancing as much as possible. If you don't need to be in a meeting, if you can Zoom it, if you can conference call it in, make that happen. This is very, very serious. We need to all work together, not just within Macon Bibb County. This is a community. We all live, work, and play here in Central Georgia. And so we need to make sure that everyone is doing their part on wearing a mask, socially distancing, not attending mass gatherings. That is another critical issue. Um, I know we've talked about hot spots before. 2% um, of our total cases here in Bibb County can be attributed to a specific hot spot or a congregate setting or something of that nature. Other than that, the balance, the other 98% of our cases that we're seeing are community spread. The entire region is, within, is in substantial community spread. So once again, I cannot reiterate this enough. Wear a mask, do not attend mass gatherings, socially distance and wash your hands. And that's all I have barring any questions, sir. Any questions for Spencer by members of the commission? Hearing none, Spencer, thank you very much. Um, we appreciate your keeping us apprised, a um, and, and we, we appreciate it. And like I said, word, words to the wise. Thank you, sir. Um, moving on, the uh, next item on our agenda is to review the agenda for tonight. But if you'll permit me, I'm going to go over to the consent agenda first and the executive session, perhaps. And then we'll we'll see kind of what we are. Uh, well, no, I won't. I, let's just let's just do it like it says. Do it. So so to review the uh, meeting agenda for tonight, uh, we'll have a an opening prayer. I understand that Commissioner Allen has agreed to give us our invocation, so I'll call on him for that. The approval of the minutes of of our pre commission and regular commission meeting of November the seventeenth will be next, uh, then we'll have reports from our committees. I think the Operations and Finance uh, Committee will give us a report. Economic and Community Development will give us a report. No report from Public Safety other than every day is, is a, a Public Safety Appreciation Day. Uh, and Facilities and Engineering will have a report too. So we'll get those, those three reports. Um, then it, I understand we may have one public comment to read uh, at that uh, point in the meeting. Uh, the consent agenda, depending on whether or not we take action on that uh, in pre-commission. And then old business, the first and the second item under old business will be the question of whether or not to override the mayor's veto 
uh, first on the naming of the auditorium and second uh, on the veto against the anti-discrimination. Those will be the first two items. We'll move on uh, to an ordinance uh, to amend uh, Article 10 of Chapter 22 of the Solid uh, Waste uh, and Measures for Solid Waste Ordinance. Uh, that was heard by the Committee of the Whole, and Committee of the Whole recommends approval of that. Uh, item D under Old Business is an ordinance to approve a supplemental appropriation um, for the transfer of $900,000 from the debt service fund and the transfer of 54,000 from the capital improvements fund uh, to the land site improvements fund FY21 budget to allocate funding for Rosa Park Square. These are the proceeds and interest payments uh, on the purchase of the Willow Hill Annex building. Uh, so we're designating that into a fund for Rosa Park Square but not appropriating the money for any other specific purpose other than just for future use at Rosa Park Square. Committee of the Whole recommends approval there. Uh, item E is an ordinance to dedicate a portion of Jeffersonville Road. It's a Senator David E. Lucas Senior Way. It's not changing the name of the street, but adding signs to designate the street is in name recognition for Senator Lucas. The Committee of the Whole heard that and recommends approval. Uh, item F is an ordinance to authorize a Supplemental budget appropriation from fund balance for the tax commissioner's budget for the $6,676 to provide uh, for a lease of additional parking areas uh, at the tax commissioner's office. Uh, item, uh, I'm sorry, um, facilities and engineering committee heard that and recommend approval. Uh, item G, uh, an ordinance of approving and authorizing the reappropriation of $66,528.71 from the Poplar Street uh, development over to Gateway Park uh, to help uh, finish that bit, uh, park at the intersection of Riverside Drive and um, MLK, the Otis Redding Bridge. Uh, Facilities and Engineering Committee heard that, recommends approval. Item H. Resolution authorizing the acceptance of approximately 28.37 acres of land located at 1000 Boulevard uh, and uh, dedicating the same for passive park purposes. Facilities and Engineering Committee heard that, recommends approval. Uh, item I, resolution authorizing to execute a general construction contract with Dactronics Incorporated in the amount of $785,100 for the installation of a new video scoreboard at the Macon Coliseum uh, be paid for out of SPLOS proceeds. The Facilities and Engineering Committee heard that and recommends approval. Uh, item J is an ordinance to establish an ad hoc advisory board of equity and civility for the purpose of advising the commission with respect to pending equity assessment program solicitation and <coughs> providing guidance. The Economic and Community Development Committee heard that and recommends approval. Uh, item K is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute a purchase agreement with Major and Associates Incorporated doing business as Cana Communication in the amount of $59,645 for the purchase and installation of access controlled security system at Government Center. The Operations and Finance Committee heard that and recommends approval. Got a couple of items of new business that I'll read at the conclusion, there are about four. Uh, items of new business that I'll read. Uh, any questions, comments, or concerns about any item uh, on the agenda for this evening? If not, uh, let me go on and talk to you just a minute or two about the, the consent agenda. There is only one item on the consent agenda, and it is for the Mellow Mushroom, uh, located at 5425 Bowman Road. Uh, they're, they're having to come back uh, before us. Uh, there, there may be a change of ownership, uh, but this is the, the reason it's coming up, but it's an established uh, entity, business entity on Bowman Road. Uh, and it is for, uh, I think, beer, wine, and I think mixed drinks. Let me double check and sh be sure. Yes, uh, malt beverages and distilled spirits, all three <clears throat> consumed on the premises there at the Mellow Mushroom, um, but it has the sheriff's certificate, planning and zoning, the distance requirement, et cetera. It's just a change of ownership that uh, is requiring us to do that. 
if there are any questions, let me let me have them. If not, can I get a motion to issue the license as requested? So moved. By Schlesinger. Second. By Allen. So got a motion and second to issue the license uh, to the uh, Mellow Mushroom for the discussion. They, did, Mr. Mayor, did they have liquor license already? Did they have liquor out there already? I knew they had beer and wine. Michael, I don't know the answer to that. I, 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 I don't know for sure, Mayor. I believe they do, um, but I don't I'm, know for sure. I haven't been there in a while. To be yeah. to be honest, Commissioner Wynn, I can't tell you yes or no because I didn't see the previous license. But this is this is including uh, beer, wine, and liquor mixed drinks consumed on the premises. I'm assuming since it's just being a new owner that they're just taking up the old beverage beverage licenses. I don't, they have, I, so. I, I'm kind of assuming that, but I don't know. It could be an addition of the mi liquor mixed drinks. They probably had beer and wine before, I, but I don't know. They could have had, had all three. But anyway, the, the, the application is for all three, and they've paid the, they've tended the fees for all three, $2,900 for the distilled spirits, $800 for malt beverages, and $700 for wine. Okay. Which are the specified fees. Any other questions? If not, got a motion and second to issue the license to the Mellow Mushroom. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say no. The eyes have it. That'll be on uh, the agenda uh, for action tonight. That is uh, all. All of the business, other than the executive session uh, that I've got. So, uh, can I get a motion to go into executive session? Uh, so, this... I got, got got a got a motion and and second Schlesinger and Allen to go into executive session. But, uh... All in favor of uh, going into executive session to consult with our attorney about threatened or pending <laughs> litigation signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. No. Uh, Commissioner Lucas got a no. Any other no's? The ayes have it. So we'll go into executive session. Rachel, would you explain to everybody uh, uh, that's in the waiting room, but I do want the commissioners elect and mayor elect to come in with us into executive session so they'll know what, what's going on. Absolutely. Later. So we don't have anyone on the meeting currently who will need to be placed in the waiting room. So what I'm about to do is stop our live stream to Facebook and the website. So this meeting will be closed off to just those within the meeting here that y'all can see. Um, so I'm going to stop that live stream now. And then to anyone watching on Facebook and our website, um, just tune back in. When we go live, it'll be up live for a minute or two before we actually start the meeting. So you'll have a chance to rejoin for the uh, full commission meeting. Excellent. Uh, we are uh, out of executive session now at the pre-commission meeting and there being no further business uh, necessary as a result of the executive session. Uh, can I get a motion to adjourn the pre-commission meeting? So moved. By Schlesinger and without objection. Without objection, the pre-commission meeting is adjourned. <laughs>